Hello, I'm Green and this is uh, Red Pozuelo from Curval.com and today we're going to go through Calculate again. We're going to do a deep dive to learn more about this measure. So uh, without any more delay, let's go ahead. Okay, so first of all, let's do a little recap on what we learned on the previous video. What we have here is a table with the uh, years and uh, product names. Those are cheeses. And then we have the total sales. So we have 1997, 1998, and then the number of products and how much they sold. And we have created a calculated measure. Let's see, here we have it. And uh, what we have done here is we have uh, the total sales for a cheese called Queso Cabrales. This is a Sturian cheese from Spain, where I come from. So I thought it was quite fun that it was there. Um, so what we're doing is calculating the total sales for this type of cheese, Cabrales cheese. So if we look at the table here, we can see that for this year, 1998, Queso Cabrales sold 4,300 units and the calculated measure is giving us that number for all the cheeses. And the same is happening for 1997 where we sold for 6,900 and we see that value on all the cheeses. And this might be a little bit confusing at first, but once we understand how Calculate works, it starts to make a little bit more sense. And what Calculate is actually doing here is ignoring the filter that the table is putting on on the product name column and just overriding it with queso cabrales. So for example on this row, in the first row, we have that the cheese is camembert but calculate is telling the measure to do the total sales for queso cabrales so it's completely ignoring uh, this filter but it is actually showing us the total sales for this year. So it's only ignoring the product name filter, not the year. So that is important to note. Uh, if we would remove the year here, you would see that it will give us the value for the queso cabrales for all the years, and then it will ignore the product name. But on the other hand, if we would get back the year and remove the product name, then we will see the correct numbers, right? Let's go back to product name. So what Calculate is doing is ignoring the filters that you are actually applying on the Calculate formula. It is ignoring the product name filter that is on this table. Just to remember what it does, I always think about the Henry Ford analogy that the, he told their customers that they could buy any car, any color they wanted, as long as he was black. So this is exactly the same thing. It just ignores everything and said, I'm going to give you what you told me from the beginning, which was total sales for Queso Cabrales. So what we're going to do today is going to go through a deep dive of Calculate and learn a little bit, little bit more about how it behaves. So the next thing we're going to do, we're going to add another column to this Calculate formula. So we copy these, new measure, and we're going to put two conditions from the same column. So we're going to filter by product name Queso Cabrales, and then we're going to filter or product name Gorgonzola. Gorgonzola. Lino. You will get hungry watching this video. Before we put it in, just try to think about what do you think is going to happen? What is this calculate column going to do? Is it going to give us the value for Queso Cabrales and Gorgonzola and ignore the rest? Is it going to give us the sum? Uh, what do you think will happen? Just uh, pause the video and take a second to think about it and uh, then come back to see what is actually happening and why. So if we add this measure, what it is doing, let, let me do proper formatting. So what are the results? What 
Calculate is giving us now is Queso Cabrales and Gorg Gorgonzola cheese, the sum of both together and ignoring the rest. But it's not again ignoring the filter for 1997 and 1998. So it is again ignoring the filter that is on the product name and is saying, okay, it says Gorgonzola here, but I'm asked to give the sum for Gorgonzola and Queso Gabrales. So I'm going to give you the, to the total number no matter what is in here. Okay, so it's again the Henry Ford effect is ignoring everything and just giving you the sum. But it's not ignoring the year because it's not something that we have filtered on here. So this is good in some conditions, but sometimes this is not the effect that you want. So what happens now if we would use filter, the function filter together with calculate? Let's look at it. So we're going to copy these. We're going to add a new measure. And this is calculate with filter. I just put an F on it so we know that this has filter. And then we're going to look at filter. Filter needs a, a table, right? So filter that one. So there we have it. So what is filter going to do here? Let's look at it. Do some formatting first. Uh, So this is interesting. When I put filter together with calculate, it ignores any other cheeses, but for the gorgonzola cheese, it gives me the sum and it does for the queso cabrales. And it does that for year 1997 and 1998. So this is interesting. And this is um, perhaps what you would expect from, from the beginning. And uh, to understand how this works, we, we need to go through the formula in a little bit more detail. So what happens in this uh, measure is that it starts always with the filter. So the first thing that gets executed is the filter part and then the calculate. So the filter function, we talked about that on a previous video. Uh, what it does is it gets the table that you want to do the filtering on and then it uh, iterates the condition that you set row by row. Like you would have in Excel, it goes row one, is this true, yes or no. So it goes into this row, Camembert, and it says, okay, um, do I have to do something on this row? And nothing here in our filter condition says Camembert, so it skips it. And then it goes to the next one, nothing here skips, it goes here, nothing, and then it goes to Gorgonzola, so, oh, I have to do something here. So it sets this to true, so this is a column that it will somehow keep. Connect, and then we're going to evaluate our filter condition, right? And the FFM, and this is what it returns. So calculate will receive these. Instead of receiving the entire table, it gets a table of two cheeses, cheese queso cabrales and cheese gorgonzola, and it will perform the sum of it. So it is a huge difference, right? So that's what you see in here is performing the sum of Gorgonzola, is performing the sum of Queso Cabrales, which that's what filter gave calculate to work with. And then it will ignore the, I mean, the, the other uh, um, rows are not in the, in the filter function, so it just ignores them, calculates, ignores them too. So you see the different behaviors, these, uh, it will go row by row and say, mm, I don't care what you say, this is what it gets. But here, it, the filter is actually telling Calculate exactly what it, he should do the sum on. 
I hope I am explaining myself. Um, now you might wonder, can we actually get this behavior with filter on calculates? And you actually can do that. Let's try another measure. New measure. We copy that. I'll put all. So what happens if we put the all function in here? Let's have it there and remove the... So what happens here is exactly the same that happens with calculate, which you don't add filter on. The first thing that happens is filter and it's like Queso Cabrales and Gorgonzola. Uh, get those two. And then the all says to calculate, use the entire table. Instead of just using the table I gave you previously, you said used everything. And then that's when you will see the same effect as calculate without a filter. It will go again evaluating row by row and say, okay, come about, no, that's not you, but this is what you get. Okay. When should we actually use filter? When should we not use filter together with calculate? Well, there are um, some things that calculate cannot do by itself, where you will have to use filter whether you want or not. And we will go through some examples here. One thing that calculate cannot do is to have a measure on the filter part. Let's put an example uh, so you actually can see it. Let's say we want to know uh, the products that have high sales, right? So we will say some of the sales where the total sales exceed, I don't know, 10,000 Swedish crowns. Okay. And uh, calculate won't work. It's just telling us, that, okay, this has to be a true or false expression and uh, you're using a measure and that's not allowed. Okay. I, I wish that this was a better... Uh, error, but now you know if you're using uh, a measure on calculate on the filter part of calculate, then you will get an error and it won't work. Another thing you cannot do is to have, for example, the order. This is a silly example, but just to exemplify order details product ID bigger than order total sales. So we want the product ID to be bigger than the sum of total sales and then give us the result. I know it's a silly example, but just what I'm trying to simplify is when you have a column that is bigger than a measure that you have defined, which is, uh, I would say it's, it's quite a normal case to have. This is a measure, the sum of total sales. Um, just to make it clear and you cannot do that for two reasons you cannot do that because you have a measure on the filter part of calculate we already gone through that but not only that uh, calculate you can have on the filter side you can have a column that is equal bigger smaller than either a number a text or a date. Nothing else can be on this side of the column. And you will find tons and tons of cases where you actually want to use measures that you have created to recalculate things or calculate things uh, so it shows another point of view of the data. So for these cases you actually need to use filter. You will find yourself using calculate and filter very, very often. And the only thing you actually need to remember is the actual behavior, what it actually is doing. So I hope that this has uh, helped you understand uh, calculate a little bit better. I hope you enjoyed this video. Yeah, if you like it, please uh, let me know by liking it. If you have any comments, questions or suggestions, let me know on the comment box or any of the social channels listed on the description box. Subscribe, I publish videos every week about Power BI. Have a great evening. Bye.